make this live video instead of trying to film one. Um, on the importance of setting boundaries, not just like with a specific person, but just boundaries in general. Because you can have boundaries with coworkers, friends, neighbors, strangers, lovers, all that stuff. Um, but this example specifically talks about an SP. So there's a lot of confusion in, um, let me move my phone real quick. There's a lot of confusion in the manifesting community where people, when they hear things like dropping expectations, they think it means I have to be a doormat or if they're hearing stuff about like not reacting and all that stuff, they, they think that it means I have to be a doormat and that's not what it is. So I want to, hold me adjust my phone real quick. I want to explain what healthy, what, uh, setting healthy boundaries is. So I had a client today who I had worked with her before a long time ago and it had been a very long time since we spoke and you know, she's with her SP and everything. And the issue is that she was, she kind of how she described it was she said that she feels like she wears the pants in the relationship. Like, um, she, so her backstory, her perception on her SP, right? And we worked on changing this perception. Her perception on her SP, just from what was showing up, the perception she kept solidifying was, you know, he has a lot of emotional baggage. Um, he grew up in an abusive family. Um, his exes treated him terribly, all these girls that he was with. So he was just one of those people that was stuck very much in a victim mentality, right? So what happened was in this relationship, he was always very emotionally reactive. So in other words, he was always um, a crybaby is the best way to put it. Like you've seen in some of my live videos, he kept making her the object of his attention. So in other words, I need her to show up and act this way in order for me to feel better is how he was treating her, right? And you see, I want to talk about in this video the difference between what empathy and compassion are. And empathy is something that a lot of people should not be going for. Empathy is a defense mechanism. Empathy is something that you don't want to walk life with through life with it. You want to walk through life with compassion for others, not empathy. So empathy, let's explain it real quick. Empathy is a defense mechanism that we learn, whether we learn it through our parents, whether we learn it through, um, whether we learn it through uh, bullies at school, maybe somebody in our reality who's mean to us. So this is what empathy is. Empathy is where I calibrate my emotions to the reality around me. I keep letting everything around me affect me. But more specifically, empathy with people is I calibrate, I learn as a defense mechanism, I learn to calibrate my emotions to the person who caused this fear or whatever it is to match theirs. So an example, let's use an abusive, a child growing up in an abusive household. So a child growing up in an abusive household an example would be, let's say they have an abusive parent, abusive mom or dad, whatever, right? So let's just, let's just, we'll just use mom. Okay, so mommy's very abusive, right? So the child learns empathy. So empathy, they learn to calibrate their emotions to where their mom is on the emotional scale. So if mom's angry or flustered, the child learns to be afraid. They learn to lower their own emotional well-being down to match their moms in order to avoid conflict or things like that. Another example would be um, a child who undergoes really bad bullying, right, in school. The child learns to be on the lookout and to be afraid of the bully. So every time the bully shows up, let's say the child was happy, then they walk around the corner and they see the bully, then they're all scared and tense, right? And they try to be all passive and you know very, very passive so the bully won't bother them. They, that's So empathy, you see, the difference between empathy and compassion is compassion says, 
I understand where you are, but I'm not going to lower my emotional well-being to match where you are. I'm going to be over here where I'm at, and I still understand where you are and where you are is valid, is valid, right? But I'm not going to go down there and join you down there emotionally. But you can come up here with me whenever you're ready. That's what compassion is. Empathy is a defense mechanism. Empathy is something that, especially in modern culture, um, people really like to uh, romanticize empathy. Kind of like mental illness, how mental illness for some reason is being romanticized now. Or mental disorders. So empathy is something that is romanticized because people think it's a virtuous trait. It's so virtuous and kind of me to lower my emotional well-being and take on the low emotions of others to match where they're at. It doesn't get you anywhere. You don't want to live life through empathy. You don't want to teach your children empathy. You want to teach them compassion. Compassion still understands, I can see this person is in distress. I can see they're in a low emotional state. I can see they're struggling right now. I understand where they're at and where they're at is valid. Compassion is good, but I'm not going as my divine right. It's my divine right to be happy, to feel good, just like it is for everyone else. I'm not going to lower my emotional state down to where you are to match and meet you, but you can come up here with me whenever you're ready. That's what compassion is. So let's get into the story. So her story with the SP was he was just a huge crybaby. Now, here's the thing real quick. I don't want to offend anyone, but here's the thing. A lot of people who have been through some sort of emotional trauma as a child or in their adolescence, a lot of people who live in victim mentality actually don't understand that they are usually, not always, but usually end up being manipulators. So let's talk about what happened with him. So because he had a rough time growing up and he had rough relationships with all these girls that he was with, my client, who is the girl, her SP is the guy, and it's the guy that has all the emotional baggage and all that stuff, right? He's the one that's in the victim mentality. He was always emotionally manipulating her. You know, oh, nothing I ever do is enough for you. It's just like all the other girlfriends. He was always gaslighting her, always doing this stuff, right? It's manipulation. Unfortunately, a lot of people have been through trauma. Again, I'm talking about we're just this specific set of what we're talking about. Don't realize they're actually manipulators, seriously. Because what they do is they get the sympathy votes from everyone because they think that for validation, I need the sympathy, the pity, the coddling. So what she told me in the story was that he's always a crybaby. He's always reacting and freaking out and takes everything personally. And, you know, he always expects to be coddled by her. You know, he always needs her to val like like she's his fucking mom. Seriously, like she's she's his mommy. And so what I told her was. I was like, you need to set boundaries. So I told her, I said, the first thing is that if you want this to change, I told her we have to shift out of empathy because that's one of the things she told me where she said, you know, it's so hard to do this, Kayla, because I'm such a strong empath. And, you know, it just makes me so sad. I'm like, no, don't. Don't lower your own emotional well-being down to his. You can still understand where he's at and validate where he's at through compassion, but you don't have to lower yourself down to where he's at. So I told her, the more you keep doing this empathy thing, this cycle, the more you're just going to keep enabling this. So I told her, we have to switch from empathy into compassion. Empathy is not something we want to live with. It's compassion what we want to live with. So here's an example. Let's, uh, let's give an example real quick uh, with um, the Bible, okay? Let's talk about the story of Jesus, right? When Jesus would heal people, as the Bible describes, Jesus didn't sit there and go, oh, you poor thing, oh, you're sick. Oh, that just makes me so sad. Oh, you poor, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna feel so emotionally low with you. He didn't do that. He refused to see these people as unhealthy, as damaged or broken. That's why he was such an incredible healer. He still understood where they were, but he refused to see them in that light emotionally creating that. You see what I'm saying? 
that's a great example, a classic example. And again, it doesn't have to be the Bible. You can think of any spiritual or mystical uh, leader or healer throughout time, stories you've heard about it, right? They didn't sit there and see the, oh, you poor baby. Oh, you see what I'm saying? They didn't do that. They refused to see that person in that light as damaged or broken, which doesn't mean they were ignoring the reality. They understood where the person was and where they stood and that it was validated with it, but they didn't lower their own emotional state of being along with that person. You see what I'm saying? So in the relationship, he was just a big crybaby, always emotionally reacted. He always needed her to validate him and act a certain way to feel better about himself and, you know, to coddle him and to be his second mom and wipe his ass, you know, all the typical stuff, right, that a manipulator will do who needs, who lives in the victim mentality, you know, gaslighting, all that crap. So I told her, you have to set the boundaries is the first thing. Now, what I, he freaked out a couple of days ago and he called her. And he was really upset about something. She had no idea what she did this time. And she was just like, he's going to call me tonight. And she's like, whatever happens, happens, right? And I told her, I said, listen, on the phone, set the boundaries with him. I said, I don't even care if he retaliates and says that he's breaking up with you. It's the perfect opportunity for you to fix your perception, to focus back on you. And you can still get the relationship exactly as you want. I said, just let whatever whatever happens, happens. Because I told her, you need to speak to him like that. You need to tell him, I am not the object of your attention. I did not sign a contract to be your second mom, to wipe your ass and to always validate you and to reaffirm your pity stories and to keep you in this lower state. It's not my job. And I told her, after you say what you have to say, it's done. Like not the relationship, just Say what you have to say and end it right there. And if he wants to end it, great. She can still get the relationship exactly as she wants. And he can completely change. But I told her, just whatever happens, happens, right? Because what I'm saying is, even if he broke up with her as a retaliation, it gives her time to focus back on her and to fix her perception of now how she wants to perceive him. And then he can reflect the change. So I told her, I said, even if he breaks up with you, let's say you break up for two or three months, right? Just a random number. Uh, you know, we're just guessing, right? Who, who knows? I said, even if he does and you start to change your perception and, you know, focus on you and caring about how you feel. I said, when he comes back, you could find out that he went to therapy and he started, you know, getting help for himself. I see you could see an amazing transformation. Amazing. You see what I'm saying? I just wanted her to understand though, the more you keep enabling this behavior through empathy, and it's anybody's behavior. You know, it's not just an SP, it could be a coworker, a friend that you have that's toxic and always complains. The more you keep enabling it through empathy, the more it will keep coming out. So Another great example of this is um, Abraham Hicks teaches this very well in her teachings. She says, when you look at somebody through the eyes of empathy, what you keep doing is you keep focusing on the problem. So you keep seeing them as damaged and broken and needing to be fixed, which just creates more of the problem. Instead of looking at them through the eyes of compassion, which is what you want to look through, which is I understand where you're at, where you're at is validated, but I refuse to bring myself down there with you. Because if I understand I'm creating my own experience, well, if I lower my emotional state of being down to where you are to meet you, you know, through empathy, then what is that going to get us? Nowhere. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's a huge, it's a huge, huge, huge difference. So just understand that. Empathy is definitely something that you want to get rid of. You really, really, really do. Empathy, you want to teach your children compassion, not empathy. Empathy is where I, it's your divine right to be happy, to feel good. Seriously, it's your divine right. And empathy is sort of teaching people that it's virtuous to lower yourself down to their emotional well-being and, you know, make yourself feel bad because it's virtuous to pick up on their feelings and calibrate your feelings to, the, to, um, to theirs. You know what I mean? So trust me, guys, when I tell you that uh, as experience, I'm telling you guys that I used to be a horrible, horrible empath. 
a horrible impact, extremely impactful. Like I used to be that person um, from, you know, a, a traumatic childhood. And I didn't realize that empathy, I used to grow up as a teenager and even in my early 20s, thinking that empathy was such a virtuous thing to hold on to. But then when I started to realize, oh, wait, there's a huge difference between compassion and empathy. I want to live in compassion, not empathy. That's when my life, that was a pivotal moment in my life too, where my life started to transform. Like, here's another example. Um, I had a client a couple of months ago, it was a woman. And when we were speaking about her perception, we were talking about changing her perception of what her person is right now, what she perceives and believes him to be. Um, she told me that, so she was looking at him through the eyes of empathy, like major empathy, major, major empathy. And she even told me on the phone, she was like, Caleb, I just want to give him a hug and let him cry in my arms and tell him that it's going to be all right. And, and I told her, why? Why do you want to see him as damaged and broken? I said, you don't want to see him through the eyes of empathy, see him through the eyes of compassion. I was like, you see, uh, think of it this way. I've spoken to quite a few um, clients over the years, and I've, I've heard this more than once, actually. N not all the time, but it does pop up periodically where um, people people sort of take on the savior complex with their SP. So the savior complex is, it's actually a form of validation seeking. You're trying to save your SP or the person to feel validated about yourself, to know that I matter. Oh my gosh, my SP told me I'm the only reason they live. I must matter. You see what I'm saying? That's what the savior complex is. You see, the savior complex is you are using empathy to continue to see this person in a broken and damaged light and creating this fantasy in your head that you're going to be their savior and they're going to come running to your arms and crying and telling you they're the only reason you're the only reason that they live. No, you're, you don't want a damaged, broken person. You want a whole complete person. You don't, you don't want that. Um, the savior complex is it really is a sort of validation uh, seeking. I've had a few clients over the past two, two and a half years who told me that they used to have these um, imaginal scenes where sometimes their SP was crying in their arms on their bed. You know what I mean? And I was just like, why though? We're here for a short time, not a long time. Don't you want to have a good time? You see what I'm saying? Like, why would you want to see them in that broken, damaged, emotionally unstable light? Now, again, I'm not saying that if you get into a lifelong relationship, right? I'm not saying your SP will never have moments where they don't cry or you don't cry, right? You know, maybe you find out a family member dies, right? I'm not saying that. But the savior complex is kind of like these people who are just like imagining their SP is hugging them and crying. Oh, you know, oh, you're the reason I live and you emotionally saved me. And a lot of people through the savior complex don't realize they're just seeking validation. It's a form of validation seeking. Oh, if I can show up and save this person, then I can feel like I matter. See what I'm saying? So the, the boyfriend, let's talk about compassion real quick. The girl's boyfriend. Hold on, let me fix my phone. So the girl's boyfriend, right? Remember how compassion that... Notice how with compassion... Compassion says, I understand where you're at, right? You're not being delusional. You're not denying. You're not pretending that you can't tell somebody obviously is not distressed, right? That's not what compassion is. Compassion is, I understand where you're at and where you're at is validated. I'm just not going to lower myself emotionally to where you're at. So think about it this way. When you're dealing with someone like this girl's boyfriend and again, nobody is saying that his trauma that he went through from his terrible family relationship as a child, nobody's saying his trauma wasn't real and it felt real to him. And his terrible relationships, 
he had with all these ex-girlfriends that were psychotic and crazy, right? Nobody is saying that that wasn't real trauma he went through. Nobody's saying none of that's real. We're just understanding, even though he went through that trauma, I don't have to take your trauma and your low emotional state on as my own. It's not my job to meet you down there. I'm up here and my hand's ready. You can come up here with me when you're ready. It's Think about it that way. You see, so a lot of people like her boyfriend who went through a traumatic childhood and very bad relationships with women, a lot of people like that don't realize that they actually are manipulators because they've learned to manipulate to get the validation they need because they didn't. So her boyfriend, right? Let's say he didn't get validation from his parents growing up. He had a very, she said he had a very messed up family life, right? And then he had these terrible relationships with these psychotic girls before he ever met her. So he never received validation that, you know, all children do receive to deserve from their, you know, their guardians, right, growing up. So he learned, I get validation through manipulation. So I can take all my trauma and manipulate other people and make them feel sorry for me. And that's when I get my validation. So my girlfriend, she coddles me for a couple of days and says, it's okay, baby. I'm going to meet you down here emotionally. We're both going to lower our emotional state of being together. Instead of saying, hey, I'm going to be up here. I understand where you're at and where you're at's valid, but you can, I'm not going to meet you down there, but you can come up here with me whenever you're ready. Um, so what happened was he learned to be a manipulator. You see, it's really hard to tell people that have been through trauma when they're manipulating. It's really hard to call them out on it because they're just going to try to gaslight you and everything because it's all about the validation they're getting from it. And when somebody puts up a boundary or doesn't put up with it, that's when they retaliate, they freak out. You see what I'm saying? So just trust me, I've known plenty of people. I can think of a couple of people right now in my life where they used to be such toxic manipulators through the trauma they went through because they learned that I get I get uh, validation, I get validation, I get recognition whenever others feel sorry for me and sympathy and all that crap. Um, a really good example of this too is, I don't know if you guys know what this word means, I'm sure some of you do, but a hypochondriac. So a, a hypochondriac is someone who has a paranoia of illnesses. So a hypochondriac actually, literally is so powerful they are so powerful in the nocebo effect so there's the placebo effect and the nocebo effect the nocebo effect is where you use the power of your mind to start creating physical or mental illnesses a hypochondriac that's what they do so a great example is my little sister was a hypochondriac she learned for a long time that if she becomes sick, she gets validation. And, and, and she, you know, she's openly admitted this. She's, she's working on it. You know, uh, she's a few years younger than me. But it took her because my sister, here's the thing. She didn't understand for years why she was always sick. You know, she always got sick on the holidays. Her stomach always hurt. She was always puking, throwing up, couldn't keep food down. And she hated it. She truly hated being sick. And she couldn't understand, oh my God, she didn't realize she was a hypochondriac. A hypochondriac is someone, it's a child. You can notice it within children. They start to learn, oh, I get validation from mommy and daddy when I'm sick. So they literally start to create illnesses in their body, literally just through the power of their mind. That's what a hypochondriac does. So you can think of it as the same way with what he did. He learned through this girl and her family that he gets validation whenever he brings up the Sally Sob pity, poor me stories and he gets his ass wiped for free by her. So he started to do that as a form of, oh, I get validation this way. So even though from the surface level, he thinks he's just expressing his emotions and he's just trying to process his trauma, he doesn't realize the true programming that's running is when I do this, that's when I get validation.
You see what I'm saying? That's why empathy is something you don't want to operate from. You want to operate from compassion. Because when you operate from compassion, you'll easily be able to tell when someone is. Sometimes people, again, the trauma her boyfriend went through. Sometimes people don't even realize they are manipulators. Seriously, they don't consciously realize they are manipulators. They truly don't. Now, a true manipulator, somebody who knows they're manipulating is like a narcissist. That's a true manipulator. He's not a narcissist. He's just a victim mentality seeking wipe my ass, feel sorry for me, you know, hold my hand while I suck my thumb type person. So, and there's lots of people like that in different things around all around the world over different subjects, not just relationships. But yeah, it's a great example of it is so you definitely don't want to operate um, through empathy because you're when you're operating through empathy, you're not doing yourself a service emotionally and you're not doing the other person a service too because you continue to see them through the perception and the emotion attached to it of broken and damaged. You keep focusing on the problem. You see what I'm saying? So again, if you, if you want to use another example again i know not everyone um i'm not a religious person but i'm just using the classic example of jesus jesus was a great example of somebody who refused to see other people through empathy he saw them through compassion he refused to lower his emotional well-being and go oh, it makes me so sad that you're blind and you're crippled Oh, let me get myself depressed first and look, meet you down here emotionally. Then I can try to heal you. No, he refused to go down there with them. He understood where they're at. He didn't deny the reality. He wasn't pretending this person wasn't ill. Otherwise, he wouldn't heal them. He knew they needed to be healed. But he refused to lower himself emotionally and his perception into seeing them and feeling them as a damaged and broken person. You see what I'm saying? Or a sick person. That's why he was a miraculous healer. So you can think about it that way. So yeah, it's a very, it's, trust me, this blew my mind. When I understood the difference between empathy and compassion, it was a huge wake up call for me in my own life because I used to be a horrible empath. Horrible, horrible, horrible empath. Uh-huh. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Emp em empathy, em empaths tend to be manipulators as well, too. Now, this girl, I don't think she was manipulating. She was just, she wasn't manipulating at all. She was enabling. So she was enabling his manipulation. She was enabling. And again, I don't believe her boyfriend inherently is an evil person or a bad guy. He wasn't, you know, physically beating her or anything like that. And he wasn't verbally abusing her, you know, slur words or anything like that. He just was a, he was just a giant crybaby who always expected her to be the object of his attention and show up and wipe his ass and coddle him like mommy did or his, like he wished his mommy did in order to feel better about himself. So again, there's a lot of people out there who have been through trauma but it does, and even though they can be manipulators, it doesn't mean that you have to see them as an evil person. Sometimes people just don't even realize that they're manipulating. They truly just don't realize that they are manipulating. They really don't. It's not like they're an inherently evil person. A narcissist knows they're manipulating. A narcissist is different, but somebody who's been through trauma like her boyfriend did and, you know, had all this emotional childhood trauma and relationship trauma, sometimes people like that or a hypochondriac, they don't realize they're manipulating. Like it just, it doesn't come into their awareness. You see what I'm saying? So I told her, even though he doesn't realize it, which is fine, he will eventually. I said, even though he doesn't realize it, you still, you still don't have to put up with it. So guys, here's another great way to think about it. Mental illness or past trauma, any sort of trauma, mental illness and trauma is an explanation, not an excuse. It's not an excuse to manipulate someone or to be manipulated, to put up with manipulation. That's one of the first things I ever learned in my, when I was working on my psychology degree. I got it. 
took a long time, but I got my degree. But um, that was one of the first things I ever learned in my psychology degree was that mental illness or trauma are an explanation, not an excuse. It's not an excuse to put up with it, to put up with manipulation or anything like that. And it's not an excuse. So, okay, I murder somebody, right? I murder someone. Oh, I'm mentally ill. Okay, that explains it, but it's not excusable. You're still going to be punished by law. Whether you have to go to an insane asylum, it's not excusable. You see what I'm saying? Mental illness and trauma. So that's what I explained to her. His trauma is real, and he doesn't realize that he's manipulating. He truly doesn't realize it, but doesn't matter. It's not an excuse. It's an explanation. You don't have to put up with it. So that's why I told her to deal with the healthy boundaries. Put up the healthy boundaries and tell him, I'm not the object of your attention. It's not my job to wipe your ass and coddle your tears and to keep reaffirming your stories of victim mentality. I'm not here for that. And I'm done with it. And whenever you're ready to grow up and work on yourself and heal, let me know. That's what I basically told her to tell him. Now, what she's telling him, what I just said, that's not manipulation. So here's an example. Some people may be confused. Caleb, how do I know when I'm setting boundaries? How do I know if I'm just manipulating, trying to make something happen or I'm setting it for me? You know, because if you're doing it for your emotional well-being, if you're setting boundaries for your emotional well-being, then you're setting a true boundary. But if you're setting boundaries, trying to get a reaction out of them to get them to change, there's manipulation right there. That's how, and that's why it backfires. So I told her, I said, it doesn't matter what happens when you set these boundaries. It doesn't matter if he retaliates and throws a bitch fit and says, we're through. I said, what, what, let whatever happens, happens. Let whatever happens, happens. And I told her, so whether he does or doesn't break up, that's fine because you can still get exactly what you want. So I said, what you're going to focus on now is just, you know, caring about how you feel and then changing your perception of him who you believe him to be. So I told her, even if he breaks up with you, it doesn't matter because let's say he broke up with her for like two or three months. Well, what if he comes back a completely different person because she focused on her and changed her perception of him. And during those two or three months, he went and got mental help. Um, you know, he went to a psychologist, a therapist. He started, you know, just practicing these tools that he learned to help with him. You see what I'm saying? You never know. But if we ever want to see a person show up differently in reality, we have to change our perception of them. So again, it's not your job to fix people. So changing your perception is not about fixing someone. It's just changing your perception. Okay, is this really worth it to me? For some people I've spoken to, um, their SP, they thought to themselves that their SP wasn't worth it. Like, well, I like this person, Kayla, but I really don't really truly care to spend the rest of my life with them. Do I really have to actually focus on changing all this perception when I don't even, I'm not even sure if I want them? I tell them, no, absolutely not. Now, some people though are the complete opposite. Yeah, this is the person I want to be with, no other. And you know what? I'm willing to change my perception for it to show up out here because it happens through me, not to me. So it's just a case by case basis. You see what I'm saying? So it's just, you have to understand the more you keep seeing people as damaged and broken, the more they're just going to show up as damaged and broken. So there's a difference between understanding where somebody is right now and wherever they're at is validated, but you don't have to lower yourself emotionally to where they are at in order to understand where they're at. You see, empathy is a trait again i've you know said this earlier in the live empathy is a trait that for some reason is like glorified kind of like for some reason all of these young kids nowadays on tumblr and reddit just love to glorify mental illness it's like a competition to see who has more anxiety and more ocd and more mental illness it's, it's weird i don't know why we're in a culture that does this but um it's empathy is one of those things that's seen as like this virtuous thing. It's so virtuous of me to lower my emotional well-being down to others. Even though I felt great, I'm still gonna lower myself down to their level because I'm very virtuous for doing that. You see what I'm saying? You don't want empathy, you want compassion. Trust me, I was somebody who, um, 
I used to be a horrible empath, terrible empath as a child. I mean, horrible, horrible empath. Like I was just any stupid movie with any sad scene as a child just made me cry. I was a terrible empath, terrible. And I used to be a teenager thinking that, um, you know, oh, being an empath is so virtuous. This is going to make me a great lover, a great, a great father, a great, you know, businessman. No, <laughs> empathy is not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to get you anywhere. It really will not. So, yeah, if any of you have an SP, because, again, I've heard this a couple of times over the years. If any of you have an SP and you're having these imaginal scenes in your head where you're their savior and they're coming up to you and they're crying in your arms. Oh, you saved me. Oh, because of you, I found a reason to live. Drop that shit right now, because why would you want to be with someone and create a perception that they're damaged and broken. Drop that shit. Seriously. I'm not even joking. It's, 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 it's just, it's crazy. It's when you, I, the, how I found out about this was actually years ago, I saw a Ted talk from a psychologist. I can't remember his name. And it was an amazing TED Talk he did. It just like randomly showed up on my YouTube feed. This was years ago, maybe four or five. And he did a fantastic, fantastic TED Talk on the difference between empathy and compassion and explaining how empathy is just a defense mechanism that gets glorified. And I was like, man, when he just like that 19, 20 minute video, it just blew my mind away. I was really... Uh, I was really just shocked because I was able to look into my own life and see where I was being a very strong empath and I wasn't helping myself or other people in that situation. It, it was, it, it, it really blew my mind. I was like, wow. And then it was really funny. I remember a few weeks after that happened, I was watching a video it was just like random YouTube videos that were recommended. And one of them was from Abraham Hicks. And I was texting a friend at the time uh, while this video was playing. So I was kind of not really paying attention to the video. And I remember literally a few seconds later, she starts talking about the difference between empathy and compassion. And I was like, holy shit. Like it was, yeah, it was, it, it's, a, it's a huge, huge, um, huge revelation. If you're someone who's a strong empath and you start to understand the difference between empathy and compassion, it's a huge, huge, huge breakthrough in your life. You're like, whoa, you mean I can live my life not meeting every sad person down where they're at and that I can actually stay up here and say, you know what, you can join me up here when you're ready. Like it's a huge mind blowing thing. Yeah, like what JC said, I remember as a teen, all the damaged, dramatic girls got all the attention, which creates even more because it's, it signals who is the biggest mess gets the most. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You see, and you see, that's one of the bad things about social media. You know, social media, for some reason, is like is used now to just like glorify mental illness. Like, here's an example. Um I I saw somebody on my Facebook the other day, a friend of mine. I don't remember who the person was. They shared a meme that was talking about anxiety and stuff, right? And the the page, the page that posted the meme, I clicked on it, had like 140,000 likes and it was called something like Anxiety Central where it's all just pity, reaffirming, I'm a victim BS. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, people people enjoy being miserable. They love waking up every day and just being miserable. It's insane. It really is insane. Very, very, very crazy. Yeah, exactly. 
like Amaya said, it's it's really just a matter of it's just a matter of understanding. I don't have to lower my emotional well-being to where other people are. It's just I don't have to use an emotional well-being. I don't have to like lower my emotional well-being down to something. It really is quite odd. We live in a society now that just loves to glorify um, mental illness, being a victim. It's really weird. It's really, really weird. And we wonder why we have all these children who have these supposed skyrocketed numbers of depression and anxiety. What the hell is going on? You know, like what's what is going on with the parents that this this these children are living like this? You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. Very, very crazy. It's. I don't know. It's just weird. Yeah, empathy is one of those things. When you're in empathy, you think it's such a virtuous trait. But then when you actually get out of it, you're just like, wow, I can't believe I actually used to live like that. Like, I actually thought that was virtuous living. And it, it, it's so weird. It's like, yeah, it's just, if any of you are manifesting an SP the last thing you want to do is have imaginal scenes or perceptions that this person is broken. You know, uh, a great example of this, um, that's something that, uh, what's her name? Um, Amanda. Amanda teaches people that on her channel from Create Your Future, she teaches people to start changing the perception. No, he or she is past their emotional baggage. They've let go of the past, which is a great way to think about it. A lot of people manifesting an SP are like, have these weird sort of imaginal scenes that the person is crying and that they're coddling them and they're damaged and broken and I'm their savior. Remember, the savior complex is just you seeking validation. It's a form of validation seeking. You're not here to be anyone's savior. You're here to have fun and care about how you feel and have a good life, not to be someone's savior. Same here. Yeah, what Craig said, I'm not joking, Craig. I literally went on my Facebook and I just did a few every single day, not a lot. I went on my Facebook a couple months ago and I just unfollowed so many people. I didn't unfriend them, just unfollowed. Went to the profile, unfollow. Went to the profile, unfollow, unfollow. So I wouldn't see any of their posts. Now, literally, I'm not joking. My entire Facebook feed is literally just like one or two couple of people and it's mostly just ads because I unfollowed everyone because I don't care for the pity and the victim mentality. I lived my life so long being that person. I don't care to deal with it anymore. I really just don't. Truly don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's actually that's actually what we talked about, Craig, me and this client. We talked about the whole twin flame and how toxic it is, you know. Oh, well, you know, we're, we're in separation right now. And, oh, we're both damaged and we're broken. You know, it's just like, oh, my God, it's crazy. Really crazy. Yeah, I literally don't. Uh, I, I don't I don't do any. Um, I don't do any any time I see someone on Facebook, I don't follow many people anymore. I just kind of unfollow them after if I see a stupid post unfollow like I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I literally do not care. I just don't even care to see it. So I think I'm following now like three people because I just don't care. There's like the last three people left on my Facebook of all my friends and family who don't post some sort of pity crap. Like I used to be a pity person all the time. I used to be that person that shared those memes that, you know, I'm going to be alone forever. It sucks when you love someone so hard and they treat you like crap. I used to be that pity bullshit person. And then I woke up one day and was like, wow, I really don't want to be this person. So I started working at it one day at a time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, she really, she did. So Rochelle posted a video like that too, Rachel. That's cool. 
I really like Rochelle a lot. She's really cool. Her channel's tiny, but I like it a lot. She's got a great channel. Yeah, it's weird. It's like these people want to manifest an SP, but they want to imagine their SP as something broken they have to fix. Why? I don't want that. Yeah, exactly. My toxic trait is that I love too hard. My toxic trait is that I care too much. Like, I saw this um, Facebook post today. Somebody on my Facebook posted something today. I don't know who the person was. I can't even remember. But as soon as I saw the post, I just literally went to their profile and unfollowed them. The post said something like, when somebody becomes invested in you, don't ignore them. That shit hurts. Be your own source of validation. You don't know what that person's going through if they ignored you. They could have been busy. Grandma could have died. Be your own source of validation. It's crazy. So I was just like, oh, another victim thing. Unfollow. I don't care. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, you don't want to be... Um, yeah, you don't want to be a... Um, you, you don't want to fix someone. You didn't sign a contract that you're going to fix your broken SP. Where the hell is that going to get you? That's not a fun relationship. Why are you, why are you desperate to manifest something that's broken? It's like you saying, oh, I want to manifest that new Corvette, but the, but the engine's going to be completely shot and destroyed and cost $8,000 to fix. Man, I can't wait for it to show up. And then it shows up and you're like, damn, it's broken. Why would you want to manifest someone you keep perceiving as broken? So that's what I'm saying. You see, and I think, I think that's a really... I think it's one of Amanda's better teachings. Like it's one of her teachings that stands out. Amanda from Create Your Future, because you guys know her intentions. You know, Amanda teaches people to change their perception of someone. And one of her highlighted teachings, I think, that she teaches people when they're manifesting an SP is absolutely not. We're not dealing with baggage. Nope. He or she has moved past their emotional baggage and they're healthy and they're stable. She teaches people that. She's been teaching them since the very beginning of her channel. And that's a very powerful perception you need to keep about your person. Again, it doesn't mean that your person's never going to have a bad day or cry or be sad, just like you won't. But you don't want to manifest in a person that's been sort of, that's showing up based on a reflection of a perception of damaged and broken. You don't want to do that. So it's, yeah, if anybody's manifesting an SP, that's a great perception to hold that they're whole, healthy, and complete, and they've gotten past any emotional baggage or they've let go of their past. That, that's a great, a great perception to have. <clears throat> I don't listen to Adele. Sorry. I mean, I know a few of her songs just because you can't escape them like they play everywhere, but I don't listen to Adele. Sorry, Craig. Although I did see that one funny meme on YouTube where she was like, am I going to collab with Peppa Pig? No. Or something like that, she said. And people were asking her if she was going to collab with Peppa Pig. I thought it was a pretty funny meme. I think it was like recorded from her, from her, uh, from her live video or something like that. But yeah, I don't listen to her music. But honestly, I just don't listen to a lot of mainstream music. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, I do listen to i listen to a pretty a pretty broad spectrum of music so it's not just like one um it's not just like one genre of music but usually even the even the people i listen to aren't really people that are super huge um like there's this english singer that i really like a lot she's a she's a pop singer she i she would that's like an example of like a pop music I would listen to. Um, she's a pop singer. Her name is Foxes, and I really like her music a lot. I think her real name is Louisa or something like that, but she goes by Foxes. She's not big in America. Nobody knows who she is in America, but I like her music. It's just nice little 
indie sort of pop music. So for a pop artist, that's something I would like is her. I really like Foxes a lot. I used to have the biggest crush on her. I mean, I had the hugest, hugest crush on her. I used to think, oh yeah, when I saw her, when I first saw her in like 2012 or 13, I thought I wanted to marry her. Yeah, I used to have the biggest crush on her. Yeah, she, she's she's really very beautiful. Um, but yeah, it's just, and you are, I, I don't think that music, I think people just shouldn't listen to music if it's just going to put them back into this victim mentality. Oh yeah, I think she's beautiful, Strawberry. She's got like these big, beautiful, natural lips. Yeah, she's a very, she's very, very pretty girl. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think listening to music per se is something, you see, if it's causing you to go back into that lower state, like if it's a song that you associate with a breakup, then you don't want to listen to that song. You see what I'm saying? Maybe you can change your perception of the song eventually. But yeah, it's just, I would just avoid things that cause you to just feel bad. So, because if you care about how you feel, then why do I want to engage in things that make me feel bad? You see what I'm saying? Um... What is that? Yeah, I don't listen to Adele. I didn't say anything's wrong with her. I just don't listen to her. There's a lot of singers. Like, I don't even listen to mainstream radio. Like, every now and then, I'll turn in and tune into mainstream music. And, like, it's been, like, a year or eight or nine months. And, like, I don't understand or even know who any of the people are. Like, every year, there's just more and more artists where I'm, like... I don't even know who the fuck these people are. So it's not it's nothing it's nothing personal against those people. I just don't keep up with it. That's all. I just don't. You know, sometimes I know some of their songs just cuz like I heard it like in a supermarket or a restaurant or something, but yeah, I I, I um um I just I I used to listen to a lot of mainstream music. I just don't anymore. I don't know. I just listen to my own music now for some reason. Just like I used to watch TV all the time and I haven't watched TV in years. I moved into this new house in February and I've turned on my TV one time. Just sitting on the TV stand collecting dust. I've literally turned it on the TV one time. I just don't watch TV anymore at all. Just watch stuff through my phone. But yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's just, you don't, when you're thinking about uh, empathy versus compassion, I'm telling you, man, you really don't want to listen. Um, you don't want to be looking at life through this empathy mindset. Yeah, exactly. I find that the lesser known the artist is, the more creative their instrumentals are. That's why, like, if I was to listen to pop music, it would be that girl, that Fox's girl, because nobody in nobody in in America knows who she is. I mean, she had like one hit, and then like she was forgotten about. She just never really had a breakthrough over here. No, I don't listen to Taylor Swift. Um, and I'll tell you why I don't listen to Taylor Swift. When you make about 10 different songs, about 10 different exes, and you call all of those men toxic, but who's the common denominator in all of those relationships? It's you. So I don't listen to Taylor Swift. Um, I don't listen to anything that promotes any sort of victim mentality, uh, you know, any of that crap. I don't listen to songs about self-pity and breakups and the past, you know. So maybe that's why I don't listen to Adele. And that's not to make fun of Adele or anything. Maybe that's just why I don't listen to her. Because I'm focused forward. I'm not here to relive and rehash the past. We're here for a short time, not a long time. So I'm here to have a good time. So that's why, um, that's why I uh, 
I'm not. I don't listen to. I don't listen to pity music. I don't listen to music that's like pitting people against each other. I just don't care about that crap anymore. I just really don't. Just not my stuff. And I used to be that person. I used to be that person when I lived through empathy, through the eyes of empathy and had that victim mentality. I used to be that person that had every sad song on their iPad and their phone. You know, it's just, I, I don't do that crap. <clears throat> I don't listen to Ariana Grande. I can't even understand what she says. Like, I, I don't, I've heard a few songs of hers because I, I can recognize her voice. I can hear her voice. I know who, what she sounds like. But I can't understand what she's saying in anything. She just, she, her diction is terrible in her words. Very, very, very bad diction. I used to take singing lessons for three years. It, it's, she, she just doesn't pronounce the word clearly enough. So it's all just, I'm like, I don't, I don't know what's being said here. Like, I don't, I want to hear the music so I know what's being said. I want to be able to understand it. It's the same thing with Sia. If you've ever listened to Sia's music, she Sia's the same way. She's always like shrugging her brows, her Sunday. Like, what is she saying? Like, what? I don't understand what you're saying. Sia's the exact same way. Terrible diction. Now, I'll tell you this: one of my favorite singers, female singers ever, is uh, is um, Karen Carpenter. If none of you have ever heard of Karen Carpenter, she had one of the most beautiful singing voices any woman ever had and she died a very tragic death because she never thought she was enough so she ended up dying of anorexia from uh from heart failure caused by anorexia but uh yeah karen carpenter had a very very hauntingly beautiful voice she was her and her brother had a band called the carpenters in the 70s um they were very very big lots of big hits and everything She's probably one of the greatest female singers that ever lived. Her her diction and her vibrato were just absolutely perfect. She has she had an incredible incredible voice like no other. Yeah, her voice was just like nobody else's. It was incredible. On metal music, I don't really know. I don't really listen to it. My mom, when I was a kid, used to listen to Tool growing up. I can't listen to another Tool song for the rest of my life. Crap is just, uh, God, I can't listen to Tool ever again. No, I don't listen to John Mayer. I know who he is. I just don't listen to him. I don't I can't even name a song. I don't think I can. No, I can't think of a song. I don't listen to Nicki Minaj. <clears throat> I know she is. I just don't listen to her. Nope. Don't listen to Jason Mraz. Don't even know who that is. Um, mm -mm. No, I don't. A barb. What the hell is a barb? Like barb wire? What the hell is a barb? Um, Teal Swan? Uh, she kind of creeps me out. Like a weird cult leader. <clears throat> um... Oh, okay. I see what you mean because people call, um, people call, I see what you mean. Cause like people, celebrities will call their fans like certain names. Okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Cause like the Britney Spears crap that everybody's talking about, they call it the Britney army. Okay. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. So they just have like their own, uh, their own little thing they call their followers or something like that. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah. No, I don't play any instruments. These messages are all lagging real bad. But yeah, you don't want to live. Um, you just don't want to live in empathy. <coughs> I'm telling you, did that for years. Empathy is going to cause you premature gray hairs and wrinkles, no sleep. You don't want to live in empathy, I'm telling you. I used to think it was such a virtuous trait to be an, em an empathetic person and to be a strong empath. <clears throat> no, this isn't my new house. This is the old location. I just film here when I film at nighttime just because the lighting's real good, that's all. Jeez, I can't even read all these comments. They're like lagging and then it keeps jumping up and then jumping down. To feel annoyed and put something. Yeah, if somebody tells you that you're not, you, that you're not enough of an empath, they're just being a victim. They're just being a bullshit crybaby. You know, it's your job to feel sorry for me. Don't, don't listen to that crap. Yeah, that's where you just have to change your perception. Yeah, exactly what Craig said. It's just not worth it. Um, oh, I don't know about books over self-work or help. I didn't read books. I just listened to TED Talks, read in articles and information, um, all that type of stuff. I wouldn't even go for it until you've lived life through it to even try being one. Exactly what Craig said, what like Abraham Hicks says, you can't be sad enough to get someone out of their sadness. Exactly. You don't want to live life through empathy. You want to live through compassion. There's a big difference. Okay, I'm going to end the stream, guys, because um, I go and go with a friend. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about the whole difference between empathy and compassion. You definitely do not want to live in empathy. It is something that is just, it's in no way, shape or form is it helping you. So I'll probably be on, um, I don't know, I'll probably do a live later this week. Okay, y'all have a good night.